There are some games that you immediately know are going to be great the first time you start playing it. Games that end up shaping and changing the future of gaming as we know it. Games that make you say, Shit, this is really good. This is not one of those games. The gaming industry is worth billions of dollars. From shooters to platformers, survival to battle royale, and in hopes to captivating the hearts of the next generation of gamers, thousands of games are developed every year. Some hit, some miss, some shake the world. The game was created by Atari in 1982, and the fact that we're still talking about it says a lot. Atari had commercial success with its first movie to video game adaptation, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and they thought they'd do it again with the movie E.T. the Extraterrestrial. And boy were they wrong. The game is just so damn confusing, it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do, and no matter which direction you go in, you always end up back in the same spot you started. In other words, Gene Demby, NPR, who got the game when he was young, said the game was like being in purgatory. You can't put all the blame on just one thing. Many factors contributed to the way the game turned out. Negotiations to get the rights to make the E.T. game took unusually long for Atari. Not only that, but once Atari got the rights, they still wanted a finished product before the Christmas season, giving the game designer Howard Scott Warshaw only five and a half weeks to go from concept to finished product. Even for Howard, whose exceptional track record gave games like Yars Revenge and Raiders of the Lost Ark the first game based off of a movie. It just wasn't enough time. If you ask me, trying to cash in on the movie's success by rushing the game was just too goddamn greedy for Atari. Like seriously, they could have just waited one damn year to release the game next Christmas season, giving it ample time for production. But no, they had to go and get money hungry. Boo, Atari. Boo. I don't know if it was a denial or pretty much blind faith that others would follow his word, but even Steven Spielberg himself vouched for the game's quality, saying, I was amazed at how difficult it was, and at the same time, how much fun it was to play. Well, our critics and the public had something entirely different to say. <clears throat> Ugh, sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. Anyway, it was unanimous that the game's plot visuals, and gameplay was entirely atrocious. It was the furthermost thing from the movie the game could get. It was hailed the second worst Atari game in 1983 after Congo Bongo. Surprisingly, the game did receive a couple great reviews, believe it or not. I know, right? An editor working for the Miami Herald stated that E.T. Extraterrestrial the game was difficult to learn, but once you got it down, it was very much worth your time learning. I'll say it again. It was very much worth your time learning. I feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. And that's a big note from me. Other reviews only ever saw one bad thing about the game, which was that E.T. kept falling down holes. But other than that, it was perfectly fine. Yep. This is fine. Oh, you fell down another hole, E.T. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Will you stop already? Not to mention, this came at a time when several news outlets stated that video games based on movies would become a highly profitable source. Four games got worst reviews in 1982. E.T. Extraterrestrial the Game, Custer's Revenge, Pac-Man Atari 2600, and Beat'em and Eat'em. E.T. and Pac-Man both led to the video game industry crash of 1983, which changed the industry forever. The market was already in a bit of a slump from being flooded with extra consoles from every company that wanted a slice of the 8-bit pie. The Odyssey, Intellivision, ColecoVision, Atari 5200, and the Vectrex were some of the consoles that had been released, all with their own extended library of games. Atari 2600 had been the only console that had a library made from third-party developers. However, in 1982, there was something being noticed in the video games market, and that is that it was becoming increasingly saturated. With so many systems coming in, 
there could only be so many games that would retain success, because not all of them were going to be bought by everyone. This was primarily because retailers spent most of their time focusing on shelf space for systems rather than games that could be sold. Demand for video games skyrocketed with the increase in console systems, but what had actually happened was the start of the market eventually tanking. Overprojections from manufacturers saw that a surplus was being created. For example, demand was up 100%, while manufacturing was up 175%. Third-party developers were still an odd commodity during this time, so responsibility for making games turned toward the console manufacturers themselves. E.T. Extraterrestrial The Game did so poorly that Atari dumped unsold E.T. and other game cartridges in a landfill in Alamogordo, New Mexico. About 700,000 units. So not only did it not sell, but it also did damage to the environment. Games aren't biodegradable. If you ever wondered where they are now, the game designer, Howard's present occupation is a psychotherapist. I think maybe he got the job to help people get over bad games like E.T. Some weird sort of penance. And as for Atari, they're gone. Ome wa shinderu. Dead. They never really recovered after the video game crash of 1983. Having said all this, it makes you wonder, is E.T. still one of the worst games to date? We'll let you decide. Hello? Somebody out there? E.T. Extraterrestrial the game shook the world. E.T. Video game? Badly.